Good morning everyone. Welcome to Sunday Online coming from St John's Vicarage on Remembrance Day. And as part of our service this morning towards the end we will have an act of remembrance and we will hold two minutes silence as we remember with thankfulness those who gave their freedom, gave their lives for our freedom. Let's be quiet for a moment as we prepare. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Night has passed and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our readings this morning are read to us by John and Lynn. The reading is taken from the fourth chapter of St Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died so that you may not grieve as others who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you, for your name's sake. Amen. Oh, 
this week I found myself watching a TV programme about death. I hadn't intended to, but when I noticed Stacey Dooley behind the scenes at The Undertaker's uh, coming on, I pressed the record button and I watched it later. I was curious to see how they would uh, portray the work of a funeral director. And unsurprisingly, as a vicar, I was particularly curious to see whether the programme would include any stories of faith, because so often today TV programmes seem to airbrush out any mention, particularly of the Christian faith. Quite near the start of the programme, Stacey Dooley admitted that she's terrified of death. She acknowledged rightly, I think, that in Britain we're not good at talking about death. We're awkward about it, she said. She also said, I have an irrational fear of the inevitable. Is it irrational, though, to fear death? I'm not sure that it is. Most of us don't much like to think about death, death of a loved one, or even our, our own death, let alone talk about it. One of the conclusions that Stacey Dooley reached was that actually it's good to talk about death, healthy even. It shouldn't be a taboo subject. How about you? Do you ever think or talk about death, death of loved ones or of your own death? Have you told anyone what you want at your funeral? What do you think happens when we die? Jesus spoke about death and life quite regularly. And he was usually encouraging people to be ready for their death. Because we don't know when it will come. Wait, therefore, he said, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Bridesmaids was an encouragement to people to be ready for the time when they'll meet their maker, either uh, when they die or when Jesus comes again, if they're still alive at that point. That's what Paul was talking about in 1 Thessalonians 4 as well, the passage that John read to us earlier. Christians were dying and people were asking, what's happened to them? Where have they gone? Are they lost? Paul's answer was that those who have died in Christ will rise. They'll rise first when Jesus comes again. But all Christians will go to be with Christ for all eternity. Because Christ rose from death, death is a defeated enemy. We will rise too if we've committed our lives to follow him. Encourage one another with these words, says Paul. Knowing death isn't the end makes a huge difference to the way that we grieve and to the way we face our own death. Remembrance Day, obviously, we think about those who have died in war, those who gave their lives for us, defending our freedom, those who gave their tomorrows for our todays. So we stop honour their memories. Perhaps we allow ourselves to think about what they went through. Perhaps seeing the devastating scenes that we're seeing on our TV screens today of Gaza remind us of the horrors of war and the waste of life and resources that it is. Perhaps we give thanks for the peace that we currently enjoy. In recent weeks I found myself thanking God more and more for the peace that we know here today and not taking it for granted and praying for peace in those places currently at war. Praying for Christians in those places that their lives, perhaps the way they face death or the fear of death, would be a witness and an encouragement to those around them. During World War One, thousands of little booklets like this, if you can see that, were given to uh, those about to embark on active service. They were specially made to be small enough to fit in the top pocket of a shirt. This one contains the words of John's Gospel, which John told us in uh, chapter 20 were written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name, life even after death. Back of this book, 
there was a decision form. See that? Yeah. Decision form there. Soldiers were encouraged to fill in their name and address if they made a decision to commit their lives to follow Christ. And after the war, there were numerous testimonies from soldiers who had come to faith in Christ and who had found peace and courage as a result. One wrote this. When your small testaments were distributed on the common at Southampton, I, among others, accepted one in a more derisive than a complimentary manner. I little dreamed that I should use it and find in it great consolation in lonely hours. I've learned to realise the great personality of the Saviour. When at night I've been on duty alone with him by my side, the enemy but 30 yards away, I realised that I needed more than my own courage to stand the strain. When the shells of the enemy have burst periodically at my feet, I have marvelled at the fact of still being alive. Sometimes after the death of a soldier, the booklets found in their pockets will return to their loved ones, who in their turn found some comfort in knowing that their relative had committed their, their life to Christ. One other story in the Scripture Gift Mission archives tells of a soldier who read one of these little booklets and found particular comfort in the hymns at the back. A few hymns at the back of this. I'll just show you. The words of the hymns like uh, abide with me, eternal Father, strong to say, O oh God, our help in ages past. This particular soldier used to sing the hymns to himself and got the nickname Singing Jim. During a reconnaissance mission, a young soldier from his company was wounded between the trenches and a volunteer was asked for to bring him home. Jim volunteered under the cover of darkness and began to crawl back home with him, with his friend on his back. And then a flare burst overhead and revealed his position and he was shot by a sniper. He was killed outright. His pocket, apparently he had a long letter to his wife about how he'd come to faith in Christ and encouraging her to do the same. And survived and took that letter home to Jim's wife personally and told her how her husband had died, saving him. He laid down his life for his friend, just as Jesus laid down his life for us. There is no greater love than this, the Bible says, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Today we have so much to be thankful for, don't we? sacrifice of those who gave their lives defending our nation, our way of life, the peace that we currently enjoy in Britain, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross for our sins so that we can know forgiveness, the resurrection of Jesus that means that we too one day will rise. Look at the difference that that makes to how we face death, the death of our loved ones and our own death. TV programme that I talked about at the beginning did include stories of faith. It showed a Christian family who chose a Christian funeral and another family who chose a humanist funeral. There's really no difference in the depth of love these families showed towards the person who had died. The same depth of grief, the same desire to celebrate the life of their loved one and to honour it but there was a difference in their level of hope. Christians, our hope, our faith, has a solid foundation in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. May that faith bring you hope and allay your fear when you think about your own death and when you grieve the loss of loved ones. Let's pray. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for today. 
Thank you for those who gave their lives for our freedom. Jesus, that you gave your life for our freedom. Freedom from sin. Freedom from fear. Give us that certain faith in your life, death and resurrection that we may face our death with hope. To depart and be with you is better by far than the world we know today. Help us, Lord, to be people who are prayerful. Offer hope to those around us and who pray for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's worship together now. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. prayers today the response to may God give peace is God give peace may God give peace 
God give peace. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the service men and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God, may God give peace. God give peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss, may God give peace. God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends and all who pray for their safe return, may God give peace. God give peace. For civilian women, children and men, whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. May God give peace. God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, may God give peace. God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. God give peace. A moment of quiet now for you to lift to the Lord those you know who are in particular need today. all these situations and the lives of those we've prayed for. May God give peace. God give peace. Lord of the nations, saviour and judge of all, remove from human hearts all bitterness and hate. Grant to those who have died in war your mercy and forgiveness and bring us all to the peace of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who suffered and died and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we come now to our act of remembrance. Let us remember before God and commend to his safekeeping those who have died for their country in war and all who have lived and died in the service of the peoples of the world. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. We will remember them.
when you go home tell them of us and say for your tomorrow we gave our today let's pray God grant to the living grace to the departed rest to the church, the king, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those you love and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Oh,